Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust, serving Micronesia since 1938. Matson and the Adahi Tano Program. Cars Plus, home of Guam's first and only lifetime limited powertrain warranty. IP&E, fueling excellence. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurants, always open, always local, and serving up favorites for over 40 years. Ahead on primetime, Chris Barnett reports on what the game plan is once GovGuam contracts for quarantine and isolation facilities expire. Plus, former Governor Carl Gutierrez will be interim president and CEO of the Guam Visitors Bureau. And our Adriana Cotero follows up on what's being done for the homeless population on Guam during the COVID-19 crisis. Hafane and good evening everyone, I'm Nestor Lecanto. And before we get to the latest he island headlines, a message from one of our frontline heroes. Happy day, Guam. We are still in this together. Please continue to wash your hands, practice social distancing, protect you. And our thanks, as always, to all of our frontline heroes. And now to the news. Former Governor Carl Gutierrez has been named the interim president of the Guam Visitors Bureau. The announcement was made during Governor Leon Guerrero's press briefing today. Gutierrez will take over for the retiring Pilar Leguana. He explains what he has planned for his brief 90-day appointment. I want to be able to work with the board and the staff at GVB and the people in the tourist industry to try to figure out exactly some of the strategies that we need to be able to, to filter into the bigger picture that we have in our economic strategy group. Because it's going to take at least a couple of months before tourists can start looking at Guam and uh, we don't even know when we're ready to be up and ready to receive tourists. But we need to be able to gather what we need from the industry and wrap it into the big picture that we are providing right now. Separately, Governor Leon Guerrero was asked about the expected passage by the House of the $3 trillion HEROES Act, which will provide up to $2.6 billion in assistance for Guam. There are some good things there for us. For example, there is a provision there that uh, uh, mandates the federal government to pay for now EITC and it's going to be an ongoing situation. There's also more monies there for economic recovery uh, impact stimulus. They want to give more out to the community. But all this money that the federal government is giving to us is going to be pumped right into the economy. The HEROES Act is expected, though, to face strong resistance from the Republican-led Senate, who are balking at the huge cost of yet another multi-trillion dollar federal aid package. With the government contracts for quarantine isolation facilities set to expire, it doesn't appear that they'll be renewed. And instead, GovGuam will head in a new direction. The Department of Administration got its marching orders to pay invoices from GovGuam vendors responding to COVID-19. That's right, they're getting paid. Despite the fact contracts aren't signed off on by the Civil Defense Administrator Charles Estevez, certifying Officer Marie Kenga and Attorney General Levin Camacho. Why didn't you sign any of these um, agreements? Well, it, the process wasn't done through GSA, so if it wasn't done through GSA, then, um, you know, I mean, we can't certify documents without a GSA contract uh, purchase order. According to Estevez, who's been the head of civil defense for over five years, emergency procurement is only after it's determined that a need cannot be met by the local and federal government. Estev is adding, for example, OCD procured personal protective equipment and other materials needed to respond to COVID-19, which went through the General Services Agency, or GSA. So when all of this uh, stuff was happening with the procurement of uh, these quarantine isolation facilities, didn't anybody with experience say, raise their, the red flag and say, this is not right? <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, I wasn't involved until... Um, later on. Responses to FOIAs from KUAM include a chain of emails wherein the governor's legal counsel, Hai Hyun, was lead negotiator on contracts for GovGuam's quarantine isolation facilities. Guidance was even sought by the AG's office. In a March 25th email, Hyun wrote to Estevez, quote, I have forwarded all the unsigned contracts to you. The attorney general is asking that I complete a sole source procurement record prior to him signing off. I am awaiting some docs from GHRA to help me complete it, end quote. Those contracts remain unsigned when they hit Estevez's desk 
On May 8th, the governor flexed her emergency powers under a public health emergency, mandating DOA to cut the checks. I'm not going to sign anything unless I uh, get concurrence from GSA, right? So if, if, if GSA is, um, you know, if they're not going to agree, then, then it makes sense that, that we wouldn't be able to certify the funds. And it wasn't just quarantine and isolation facilities contracts that went unsigned. There wasn't even a contract in place for meals provided by Capital Kitchen. So when I was given the invoices from Capital Kitchen, and you know, we, we tried to, to see if there was still the continued need for feeding. And so uh, when um, Capital Kitchen called me up and said, uh, "How do we, uh, what's the, you know, how do we basically get a contract?" And so I said, "Okay, you know, let me see your last contract. Uh, you know, go ahead and shoot me your invoices so we know, you know, how much you're talking about." And when the owner told me that he didn't have an existing contract, I said, oh, "Okay." Uh, as of right now, please stop feeding. You know, because we can't, inc- you know, I, I can't tell him to, to, to keep feeding because then we start incurring costs that, you know, I, I'm just not prepared to, uh, to pay. But because of the governor's special powers, Capital Kitchen was paid almost $80,000 for meals provided to quarantine and ad loop staffers. KUAM is still waiting to hear from Department of Administration how much has been paid to COVID vendors without a contract or unsigned contracts. KUAM asked Estevez if all of these would meet the test for federal reimbursement. I'm not sure, so it really depends on on what um, you know FEMA will, will accept in terms of of uh, paperwork and documentation. Um, you know, if a document's not signed or not executed, I mean, is it is it you know, legal document. I, I don't know. It really depends on, on when we do the exploratory calls and we work with, uh, with, uh, with, you know, with, with the FEMA recovery division to, to determine what's eligible and what's not. And while for now it appears it is what it is, Estevez says going forward, the Office of Civil Defense and GSA will be involved ensuring the proper protocols are followed. I can tell you that right now we had, we, you know, we're, we're working to procure these quarantine facilities, isolation facilities, and we met with the, uh, the chief of staff, we met with the chief procurement officer, um, uh, public health was there, we, I think it was like two days ago that we met, and we laid out the process that this is uh, what we're going we're gonna to requ- require in terms of a hotel quarantine facility or a quarantine facility, this is what we're going to require in terms of isolation facility, you know, we got public health buy-in, um, you know, the chief of staff. Uh, acting chief staff John Junikov was leading the meeting and you know GSA uh, was there and they concurred. As we reported the unsigned contracts for quarantine isolation facilities are set to expire in the next few days although there is an option to extend it appears the government is starting from scratch and with someone else besides the governor's legal counsel taking the lead. So you know the legal counsel will always be there to to provide uh, advice and guidance and you know uh, if needed but uh, uh, no, at this time, the Jeffords being led by uh, by uh, the acting uh, uh, chief of staff. For Guam's News Network, Chris Barnett reports. When the new quarantine isolation facilities are secured, Estevez says the plan is to have the National Guard staff the facilities, as opposed to the government's directors and deputy directors, Adeloupe staffers, and other Gov Guam employees. And as we mentioned, the Attorney General also did not sign off on any of the hotel quarantine contracts. KUM asked repeatedly if the May 8th memo negated the need for his signature, but didn't get a yes or no response. We then followed up and asked whether the AG will conduct a review of the entire process and vet it for legality, compliance, and quality control as an independent elected attorney general. We received the following statement. Guam law affords the government extraordinary authority when responding to a public health emergency, and our office has been actively assisting our client agencies in responding to this unprecedented COVID-19 pandemic. But we all recognize that extraordinary does not mean limitless. Our office will continue to review government contracts and the procurement process for compliance with the law, including the documents posted on the governor's website. But we are unable to comment on the legality of the documents or the process until we have enough time to adequately review them. Mayor, senators, the media and prior island leaders continue to ask the administration, what about the homeless population? And KOM's Adriana Cotero presents the same question to the vulnerable community. The homeless individuals say it's simply long overdue. To me, I, I've been out here 
we we more than everybody else hire. Been hired more than ten years. You know, and all of a sudden they only started coming over safe haven when the coronavirus came in. One of the promises was to help out the homeless, so basically just uh, fulfill that obligation. It's been like, like people say, it's, uh, it's way long uh, overdue. Jason Torres and Marcelino Uggen say any aid for themselves in the nearly 1,000 homeless population in the community is past due. As this isn't the first time Torres and Uggen say they have been dismissed by the administration. I had my own little experience with the governor and she didn't really uh, care to even say hi to me you know, like when um, before this whole thing started. Present day still suffering and now losing hope while in a state of emergency. It's hard for us work to sleep, you know, like private places, you know, we can't leave there, we can't hang out there, we can't be around. You know, some people look at us wrong, you know, and think that we're, you know, we're gonna hurt them or look where we're, we're sleeping at, look how we're, we're surviving out here. It's been over a month since Governor Lou Leon Guerrero introduced the Safe Haven Project, an initiative to address the homeless population during the pandemic. Plans that included individual tents for homeless individuals, tents with Wi-Fi, renovated showers and restrooms at Paseo Stadium. However, those plans fell through as the site was not conducive to limiting the spread of COVID-19. Additionally, FEMA told KUAM the tents were determined an unallowable expense. Today, Governor says the site alternatives being considered are for a more permanent plan. There is requests for a proposal for sites that we have put out there. We're looking to harden the safe haven. Um, there, there is a concern about making sure that we don't just give a temporary um, situation, but we give a much more permanent. Despite prior to the COVID crisis, Governor scrapped plans to house the homeless at the old legislature building. However, in addressing their immediate needs throughout the pandemic, Torres and Uggen share this message. To me, the governor, she uh, pretty much contradicted her own uh, executive orders. Try to fulfill that obligation to us. Don't just say something that you're not gonna, that you're not gonna do it, you know? Give, you give us hope that, you know, there is gonna be help for us. Adeloupe confirms they have not received any RFP responses. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Adriana Cotero. And back with more news right after this. It's a special delivery to your inbox every week with your KUAM News Roundup, program advisories, and promotions. Sign up for the weekly KUAM Digital Digest today on KUAM.com. It makes myself and it makes my team members very proud to work for an organization that has been on island for many years with its focus on reliability, dependability, and commitment to the communities that they operate in. Matson's a great corporate citizen to the community. We all benefit from any sort of environmental commitment we make. One of the ways that we do that is with our Adahi Utano program. There's action behind it, and so action breeds commitment. With the Kaimana Gila coming to Guam, this brings a new age and modernization to the island. It's exciting for me because it's a brand new ship and we can carry more freight into the island. It just shows growth for Guam and Micronesia. Matson would be nothing without its customers and we hope to continue to serve you for decades to come. While we've all been through a lot over the years, typhoons, earthquakes, and now COVID-19, we've been able to get through these together. For more than 80 years, Cabo's Insurance has been protecting your homes, your businesses, and the health of your family. We are here today, and we'll be here tomorrow. There are better days ahead. Tomorrow's a new day filled with hope and choices. The possibilities of what we can achieve together are limitless. Let's continue to work together to ensure a brighter tomorrow for all of us. 
We are open to serve you at Cars Plus Guam. Need a quick service for your vehicle? Visit our express lane at Cars Plus. Done fast, done right. No appointment needed. Our service team is dedicated to helping you get your vehicle in and out of the shop and back on the road quickly and secure. Simply drop off your vehicle at our express lane driveway and one of our service advisors will take care of you. Need a ride? Not to work. We have a shuttle vehicle ready to drop you back home and pick you up when your vehicle is ready. Open Monday to Saturday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Visit us today. We are open to serve you. and match data pass. Take your data further. KUAM News, winner of the 2020 Regional Edward R. Murrow Award for Excellence in Social Media. Welcome back. Administration officials provided an update for senators today on the $1.3 billion in expected federal assistance and the $559 million that's already been received. Speaker Tina Barnes scheduled the virtual informational briefing, which senators said they appreciated, but with some, including Vice Speaker Talena Nelson, saying they wish they'd gotten it earlier. The numbers are going to be changing as we, as we continue to get more resources, and we already know that there's another uh, bill in Congress uh, that should be passed, and hopefully that we can get more uh, economic relief come to our island. It would have been nice to, if we could have been able to get all of this information maybe like two weeks ago, so it would stop a lot of the other scrutiny, but I'm more than, I'm more than happy uh, to see this happen today, and um, hopefully that there will be an opportunity for us to create a dialogue um, with this information visible for the people, Senators also had a number of questions after the briefing, but were not allowed to ask. Instead, they were encouraged to send in their questions in writing for a response. In-person payments can now be made at the GPA GWA headquarters in Fadian. The cashier booths in the lobby and new drive through lanes are open. Although CCU member Simon Sanchez says the non-disconnection policy will probably be extended till the end of the month to coincide with the governor's emergency declaration. The CCU has yet to decide what to do for those ratepayers with accumulated unpaid bills. Let's say you owe two, three months of power. You know, I, uh, the current payment plan, I think, is you got to pay back in three or six months. That, that's going to be very difficult. So that, that tells me we should amend that current payment plan and come up with something that gives more people more time to recover uh, in this time of still great uncertainty. The CCU will be reviewing GPA and GWA's post-emergency payment recovery plans at a meeting next week. It's been over two months since inmates have received any incoming items from their loved ones. However, starting on May 25th, the Department of Corrections is lifting restrictions and opening a drive through drop-off. A couple of weeks prior to DOC sent a memo out stating families may mail packaged in on May 6th. However, that did not go as planned. According to Major Anton Ogden, it was ultimately turned down by DOC administrators as it became, quote, a logistical nightmare, having to go through boxes for every single inmate to ensure all items were authorized. Major Ogden says those pa packages will eventually get into the inmates' hands. Ogden emphasizes the incoming are personal hygiene-related items. Items that the families are allowed to bring in uh, on a schedule, usually it's a monthly schedule, and since the COVID, we had suspended all those activities. So now that we're, we're in peak core two and, and we're moving towards PQ3, uh, peak core three, uh, we are going to open up the incoming, but only for personal hygiene. So DOC has sent an official memo to all the housing units of their drive through schedule. According to Ugin, the drop offs will be from 8.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. And there are set days and times for each housing unit. It would be a drive through 
the families would uh, we're going to have officers out there controlling traffic and the families will be allowed to come up stay in their vehicle they'll be wearing masks they'll be having their temperature take taken before they even drive through our gates and they will hand the uh incoming items which is only personal hygiene there's a list of authorized items yeah. the process will continue through june 5th and now on to the CNMI there. Governor Rolf Torres' Economic Task Force announces their proposal to open the CNMI to tourism on July 15th. Our Tomas Manglonia reports from Saipan with the latest. Governor Rolf Torres yesterday announces the community-focused economic recovery plan. His COVID-19 Economic Task Force set a target date of July 15 for tourism to return to the Commonwealth. Task Force member Alex Sablon. We're writing a grant now to look at a grant some cost measures in place that will require domestic, I'm sorry, origin testing for the tourists leaving their country and origin testing upon arrival into the Commonwealth. The plan presented to the public outlines a three-pronged approach, phase to provide a pathway to recovery, guidance to create requirements, and monitor to enforce compliance. They're also encouraging employees to get tested. Because much of the progress for each phase relies on how many people get tested, hospital CEO Esther Munya says they've added more staff and equipment to sustain the testing initiative. We're going to have another plan of how we're going to go out to the community as well. Because we are going to be doing part of the contact tracing is community engagement. The plan highlights red to green zones of recovery. Red zone means limited government services, a curfew and commercial restrictions. Orange expands business hours and commercial fishing. Yellow allows partial restaurant services with an adjusted curfew. The green zone allows for a 75% occupancy limit, beach gatherings with 15 or fewer people, and a less stringent curfew. We're trying our best to make sure that, that our community understands that we need to go back. We need to open up our, our business partners. We need to open our tourism industry. But in order for us to get there, we need to start somewhere. The Northern Marianas remains one of the only jurisdictions able to test all of its residents. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Tomas Manglotnia. As of yesterday, the CNMI had tested 3,040 residents through the Community Testing Initiative. More news right after this. More freedom. To learn more. To create more. To connect more. Mix and match data pass. Take your data further. King's restaurants are still cooking up your favorite breakfast, lunch, and dinner plates and have them available for carryout and delivery. Call them into Munning at 647-5464 or in Denido at 637-5464 and order for carryout. For delivery, please download the free Grab and Grub app and follow the instructions to get King's delivered to your door. Be safe and stay healthy until we see each other again at King's. Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist. Over 20 years of experience. Welcome back. This morning during Containing COVID, Bree and Chris spoke with Cyrus Lure about Guam animals in need and how the community can assist as they reopen. 
You ready for a good? Yeah, yeah so of let's course. get Cyrus from Guam Animals uh, in Need up on the show. Cyrus, good Hi, morning. Cyrus. Morning. Thanks for having me. Of course, our pleasure. So we just wanted to highlight uh, some of the things that you guys are doing over there at Guam Animals in Need. So uh, we're going to pop the pictures up uh, while you're talking. Just run us through um, some of the efforts you guys are, are um, doing to assist uh, those less fortunate during COVID-19. Well, I appreciate that. And uh, I think there's like three things, three things that I can highlight. Uh, one is uh, the, uh, we're doing a, um, a, a gain pet food bank. And so we've had a lot of people reach out to us. I mean, everybody is going going through a tough time at this time, and, and we're recognizing that people in our community are struggling to, to make ends meet. So we're trying to help as best as we can. And so we've set, this past Tuesday, we set up a, uh, a temporary uh, like a food a pet food drive at a few locations around uh, the island. We were able to collect donations, and then a couple days later, we, we provided uh, some free dog food to uh, um, families are going through a difficult time right now because it's not only uh, you know our, our, ourselves that are uh, people are going hungry but also some pets as well and so this was a way that, that we thought we could we could kind of uh, help the community help each other and so that's that's what we did this past week we'd like to repeat it at least a couple more times kind of test this moving forward it's probably unfortunately not something that we can do indefinitely but we definitely want to do everything that we can to, to try to help and so um, uh, if people want to follow us on social media um, they can see when our next locations will be um, it will most likely be this upcoming Tuesday as well and if anybody does need assistance please contact us privately through social media Guam animals in need is you can how, how you can find us both on Facebook and Instagram or you can give our um, coordinators a call at 487-4845 that's a cell number so you could also WhatsApp us at that number and so that that's how we're trying to to help people out who are who are um, uh, donating pet food to the community and then uh, uh, we also wanted to highlight the fact that uh, we have some wonderful foster families who've at this point been taking in animals for almost seven weeks so when COVID first uh, really started uh, uh, when the movement restrictions uh, for public health reasons uh, were implemented uh, in in March uh, we evacuated uh, our shelter uh, all you know all of the adoptable pets we put them into foster homes because that, that would be the safest way to to take care of them in a, during this interim period and so we've had over 50 families on, on Guam, uh, well over 50, I should say, wow. take in these, these pets and, and provide them loving homes for the last six, seven weeks. They are really heroes. We, we, we want to highlight their good work. And um, in, in the near future, we'll start uh, bringing them back into the shelter and making them uh, available for adoption. But I think the really wonderful thing is that we've been able to do adoptions remotely during this period. So all of our animals are on our website, uh, guamanimals.org. People have, have uh, checked them out, and we've actually done uh, about 15 to 20 adoptions just over the last uh, few weeks. Uh, completely remotely, families are, are 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 you know sharing the videos with each other, and then we safely manage a transition of the pet from one home to another. And so, this is another another incident uh, example of just the community coming together and really helping each other out. Well, Cyrus, we just wanted to to get you on and uh, share the good works that uh, you guys are doing there for uh, people during this COVID nineteen uh, pandemic, and to let you know that uh, you and the folks over there, Guam Animals in Need, are COVID heroes. And I, I know you're doing a lot, so anything else that pops up that you're doing to help, you just give me a give me a holler, and we'll get you on the show, okay? Okay, thank you so much. Okay, right, Cyrus. Take care. Wash your hands. You too. Okay. Well, too. Okay, Mike. Uh, 10.03. Well, there you go. It's been a good time with you guys. Uh, to all of our viewers on KUAM uh, TV 11, thanks so much for watching. Uh, there's an audio stream, Docomo Channel 10. Again, uh, thank you guys. Uh, the KUAM.com, the KUAM News app. And our KUAM News Facebook live audience on our Edward R. Murrow award-winning social media. <laughs> Excellence in social media. Yeah. So. You know, before.
MTO Maintenance will now completely sanitize your home, office, or business with state-of-the-art commercial sprayers. For over 30 years, MTO Maintenance has been committed to the health and safety of our customers. And now, more than ever, a clean home, office, carpets, and furniture is a necessity to our island. Give us a call today. Stay healthy and stay safe, Guam. Call 647-6861 for an appointment. With Grand Manier, you'll dare to put a twist on the traditional that will lead you to somewhere unexpected. Somewhere you can create something better than good. Here, you'll create something grand. Grand Manier, a visionary blend of fine cognac and bitter orange liqueur. Live grand. We are open to serve you at Cars Plus Guam. Need a quick service for your vehicle? Visit our express lane at Cars Plus. Done fast, done right. No appointment needed. Our service team is dedicated to helping you get your vehicle in and out of the shop and back on the road quickly and securely. Simply drop off your vehicle at our express lane driveway and one of our service advisors will take care of you. Need a ride? Not to work. We have a shuttle vehicle ready to drop you back home and pick you up when your vehicle is ready. Open Monday to Saturday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Visit us today. We are open to serve you. And before we close out the news tonight, our latest round of birthday shout-outs from the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club. May 14th is a great day to have a birthday, so happy birthday to Sarah Elizabeth. Happy birthday number 18. We love you, say your friends and family. The chairman of the board, none other than Big 5-5, five five, Mr. Ryan Rios. Thank you for all you do, Dad, and we love you from the family and Guam's entire football community. We'll see you on the gridiron, Ryan. Vincent and Nicholas Uggen, a very happy 59th birthday to my loving husband, Vince, from your wife and familias. Not just one, but familias. Plural. Nice. Jenny Lynn Aplegy, happy birthday number 21 to our only baby, who is now a woman. Your family sends all their love. And Hayden Padronis has a blessed birthday number 11. To our baby girl, may your day be as beautiful as you are. We love you so much, says your family. And Hosea Gobri, happy birthday to you and we bless and love you. May God continue to keep you close with strength and guidance. Enjoy your special day. Your family is sending hugs. And Rick Sablon, Magos Pumpianios to the Conga Man from the entire family. Please enjoy your day. Also, happy birthday to Justice Marie Tanigo, who has a birthday today. And happy belated birthday, born on May 13th of 1997, is Shane Balura. Birthday shout out to our Shane, who is stationed in Germany. We love and miss you. Stay safe. With love from your family in Guam. And hey, from all of us at KUM, Coldstone Creamery, and your entire island, we thank you for your service. And we hope each and every one of you had the best birthday ever. And as always, you can be a part of the Coldstone Creamery Birthday Club by registering, registering online on KUM.com. Please make sure you send us a photo, a name, and a birthday. That'll do it for us tonight. Thanks for watching, everyone. Stay safe. Mm -hmm.